Good Wednesday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and thank you kindly for joining us on Real Talk with Keith Smith, a show that airs three days a week, 10.15 a.m. to 11.15 a.m., and is approaching a five-year anniversary, a show that has received accolades from national media to regional media for its breadth and storytelling, for its ability to connect with you, the viewer and listener, for its talents with its star, Keith Smith, a gentleman who's been in real estate since 1987, a man that I genuinely look up to, a man that's always dressed well, always has a uh, gift for conjuring laughter from those who are around him, and a man who knows how to close a deal. I think today's program is going to be fantastic. I've been looking forward uh, to today's program since I heard who our guest was, and I'm going to take a back seat on most of today's show as I watch the dynamic play out between a father and a daughter and perhaps the next generation of a generational real estate business, Yes Realty Partners. Judah Wickhauer is our director. <laughs> if you could huh? go <laughs> to the studio camera, my friend, and welcome our star, Hello. Keith Smith, of Real Talk with Keith Smith. Good Wednesday morning, my friend. I also get kudos from Lies of a Dog. I, mm. And that's the ones that actually... You really like coming in here because you know you're very well-liked in this I'm, studio. I'm very well... Uh, Yes. I know he does. I know he does. Yeah, I know he does. <laughs> Hi, Yvonne. How are you? Hi, Dad. Our oh, Keith. Keith. <laughs> we're, we're, in work, we're in a work environment, mm -hmm. so it's Keith. Hello, Keith. But it could be Dad. Mm -hmm. It could be Pop. It could be whatever you want. Okay. There's no... One thing that we have established, there's very few rules, uh, but... You know, we're, 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 we, this is an open and safe space. Ah, <laughs> thank did, I, you. did I use the right words? Oh, you yeah, did. You did. It's, yeah. it's funny you brought up the, uh, the dad, uh, daughter. They're, as you guys know, dad and daughter here. Um, mm -hmm. Did some business back in the day with Chris Jensen. And oh, yeah. Pat Jensen, the late, yeah. great Pat Jensen, was oh, yeah. in the room, who uh, is a real estate legend. She's now in, in heaven. Yeah. Um, and when I would watch Chris and Pat interact all the time, it was always Chris and Pat. Yeah. It's Funny, so uh, a shout out to the Erpies. So uh, Yon and I went out for dinner with Alex and his, his wife, uh, Elizabeth, um, <clears throat> Tavola, of course. But that's where we went out. And I, I asked during, during the meal, I said, so how do you and your dad do that? Because, you know, I come from a family business, right? You know, my, my father, when he left in the New York City Fire Department, worked for us to go ahead and build houses. Yeah. And I reminded him all the time that he was the father of the president which would be me. <laughs> and then I got told to shut up. But yeah. I'm excited about today. I'm excited about this journey together. And you kind of crushed me a little bit. I don't, you said that I was pushing you into this business since 2008? No, not pushing, but um, like suggesting that I get my license. Because there was a long time where I didn't know if I was going to go to a college or not, right? Like I'm first generation college. So that was like an unknown uh, route for our family. And like I remember the day I learned that cum like GPAs are cumulative, not just like for the year. So clearly I was like hopping on the college game last second, and you were like, "You should get your real estate license." You've been. I think asking, I feel like I tell that to everybody. So. <laughs> well, then my next statement was, "You've been telling me and one of my childhood best friends, Kelsey, to do it since we were 18," and you know. Well, you had I recognized talent it. from an early age. Yeah. That you that you can do Real this. Bad. So Stephanie uh, Wells Rhodes, watching of the Interstate Service Company family. I see back to family run businesses, right? Yeah, she says because um, her dad was her boss for yeah. a period of time yeah. at Interstate uh, yeah. Pest and Service Companies, and she said my dad was always dad to me, even when he was my boss. Another um, interesting dynamic here with the seven degrees or six degrees of Kevin Bacon. In this particular circumstance, it's like the three degrees of the Smith family or the Wells family. Yeah. I think you grew up with her daughter, Corinne. Yeah, and now Corinne is the teacher for my little cousin, no, yeah. or Emery. And Louisa County Public Flavana Schools. County. Flavana, Flavana County Public Schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, Flavana County yeah. Public Schools. So everyone is just a few degrees apart it's a small, in this Small community. community. Or right. it's Flavana. Yeah, or it's Flavana. <laughs> or it's Flavana. <laughs> <laughs> Mazi Vogler watching the program. Hey, Mazi, how are you? She's a great. realtor of Real Estate 3. Yeah, we, we sat down and had a cup of coffee yesterday. She's a rock star of a, of, of a real estate agent. Uh, I think Yona just and her did a transaction, and oh. we always try to sit down and thank them for a smooth transaction, and she did an absolutely smooth transaction. So back to the why, right? You know, um, I don't think I've ever asked you this question. Why, uh, why have you piv decided to pivot from being a teacher mm -hmm. uh, to, to getting into this business? 
Um, and I'm trying not to be super excited about yeah, it, by no, the way. Yeah, no, great question. Um, teaching is really tough right now, <laughs> as any teacher. Sure. Uh, but it's you, always been, right? It has always been very mm -hmm. tough, right? Well, I mean, I've only worked in it to speak to recent years. From my understanding from you know generational teachers and people who have been in the game for 20 to 30 years, it has shifted. Um, we're in a space right now, at least I can speak to my experience, where, you know, admins maybe isn't trusting teachers as much as I was lucky to have with my admin when I worked in Meriwether and um, other schools and parents aren't trusting admin and parents aren't touching, trusting teachers and teacher. It's just like almost feels like a whole communication breakdown amongst the public school and I'm sure private sector as well. Um, so for me, I love teaching and I love, I, I get my cup filled from hanging out with children. They are my favorite. Uh, I realize that I can get that avenue through different things like volunteer work, coaching, tutoring. Um, so I don't need teaching and all that comes with it uh, to, to be my filling cup with my, with my children. And like kind of my favorite analogy is like, I love when the classroom door is closed and I get to be with just my children learning what we would like to learn. Things are grooving. I don't have all the outside impacts of admin, of state testing, of parents, of homework, of just nonsense data collection. So like when my door is closed, that's why I love teaching. The problem is, is when I was getting along in my teaching career, and this is a blanket statement, might not be true for everyone, I couldn't close that door anymore. Like all of those outside factors just kept. So you were not allowed to be a teacher. I just wasn't, a, I just, it was really difficult to do the style of teaching that I wanted in the setting that I was at. So felt like a natural transition. I also don't think I would ever be okay with paying someone to raise Ravenna while I raise other children. That's like, her daughter. Yeah, yeah. That's just kind of like where my priorities lie. Um, and so I love children, but I'm biased to my own. Um, and I'm very thankful I'm in the position. Oh, you said that in plural. Is there something I need to know? To my own. Oh, okay. Oh, got my, it, got, got, got it. my hearing aid picked up something my else. Own. My, the, the, yeah, the grandfather singular. kicked in yeah, there for no, a second. Singular. <laughs> yeah, no, that's singular. No, don't worry. Yeah, I was singular. I, no, I, I, so, I heard something different. You know, that's, that was my, like, okay, this feels like a natural transition. What can I do? And I, I truly just... It started off with, like, I just want to internship underneath my family because you have such a wealth of knowledge in this field. Since 1987. Yes, and it's just, like, you're here. I want to learn it all. You're the people I learn from my whole life. So it feels a very natural transition. So how did it feel? Because, you know, the, 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 this is an open and honest, right? Mm -hmm. So how did it feel growing up with mom and dad having their own businesses, yeah. working the crazy things. That, you know, we joke around, I think I left you late standing more uh -huh. times than... <laughs> there were birthday parties where you answered phone calls, yes. Yeah, yeah. So like, how, happy how did... birthday. Hello, this is Keith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that's not what I want. That's why when Jerry's like, maybe next generation for uh -huh. the YRP family, I would love to manage that from a different perspective, but that's not the game I'm trying to get into um, because it is, you guys work all the time. It is all of the time. And that's my main friction with teaching is it's also all the time working. Um, my wife would say the same. I work all the time. Yes. I am constantly on my phone. Yeah. Either talking, sending emails, or text messaging. And it's such a fine line between um, being accessible and providing client services of um, – the highest quality, which gets you referrals and keeps keeps the client happy. Mm -hmm. Referrals is the key to referrals this business. In any business. Particularly this business. Yeah, any business. Because in a lot of ways, I'm in the same kind of business. You know, it's keeping people happy. I mean, um, just to put an example to that, and, uh, you know, mom, y Yona, I mean, God love her, um, she religiously sends out these notes. She never stops. And religiously sends out these. They're a fantastic personal touch. Yeah. <clears throat> I sincerely mean that. And I got a phone call. We're going to go see a, 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 a listing today that was a note that Yona sent four years ago mm. with a calendar and a little refrigerator thinky. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go see a house. And four years later, it made an impact. Uh, but we're going to have to shoehorn between all the meetings we've mm. got today to, and that, to, to make it happen because it's, it's a matter of taking care of the client. But, <clears throat> but I think to finish my sentence... Uh, there, 
you know it. You know when you're growing up that you're, if you have a member of, you know, a parent who works like this, like you know. Entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. you well, know yeah, they're cool. working a lot. But you don't understand it. And I think like where I'm interested to see how my next phase of life or chapter of life will be is like how do I parent and also do this? Because it's, you realize there is not enough hours in the day. <laughs> and um, so, you know, my work ethic is because I've watched you all work like that. Um, at the same time. Do you think that's common for your age group? Work ethic well, I don't, like yes. Millennials, yes. Yes. And I think the main difference between, like, boomers, <laughs> your age... We're going to go down that route, huh? <laughs> the main difference between people my parents' age and me, we have seen you all work, and this is, again, blanketing, could be very different for everyone, but we have seen you work like that into the ground. So we know how to work like that into the ground, but we're, like, desperately trying to set boundaries, like healthy work-life balance boundaries, Um so that's... So one of the great things about this business is you can do that. It's if you choose to do it or not, it's a different story. Multiple, multiple agents watching the program. Mozzie says, that's real estate. We're always working. I'm yeah. seeing that from a couple of agents that are posting it's, on the feed right now. As someone watching it growing up, between... But when I, when you, when I was growing up, you were doing your... Mozzie uh, has two daughters. Yeah, yeah, so this is hitting probably home with her, yeah. just sure. with two daughters. Yeah, I mean, like, you were in your construction business, and that was nonstop. I mean, I grew up on a job site, which is fine. Um, I learned some colorful language. I could probably, you know, thank really? my... Really? I can probably thank my humor to the job site. <laughs> but, but on the positive side, you know how to operate a skid steerer? I do. I have... You know how to operate a track hoe? Mm-hmm. Um, we used to pull up... Life with, lessons, for sure. Life <laughs> lessons, yes. Your mother, Yona's heart would sink when she'd pull up to a job site and you were up on the trusses yes. on the top with me, yeah. a hook, unhooking crane. Yeah, and trusses. like that's, I mean, that's how I love to learn now. So like, I'm that's excited my to do that again with you. I really am. I don't know if you'll catch me on a truss again, but you might well, be able to get Ray together. up there. Work, yeah. <laughs> working together again. I, I, well, it, what's going to happen, and, and Juan Sarmiento, we'll get to your comment, Johnny Ornell is watching the program. Hey, Johnny. He owns multiple restaurants. He knows, um, he knows about family. Knows family and mm -hmm. balancing family and mm -hmm. working around the clock. Yeah, um, what happens when you get in this game? And I see totally what Keith and Yona and the team see with you is like you're a people person. You have such a positive, contagious energy. People mm -hmm. want to be around you. Um, I think you have fantastic mentors that you're going to pick this game up yeah. quickly. Um, your our bracket. Uh, of age is the one that's booming and growing into real yeah. estate. So I think you're going to have opportunity galore. What happens Plus if you're going to have, there. yeah, the buyers are there. She lives in a market in Richmond. That's hot. You know, so what's going to happen when you're working three or six deals in the hopper and, and you have to do this. <laughs> so I think the thing about watching mom in particular, because dad has always just been like, I'm going to say what I'm going to say and it's going to bust some shoes. Mom is, a people pleaser is not the right word because I am the same and I know that that would offend me to hear. But mom works really hard to make sure that everybody is having the best experience they could, i.e. the note, so, yeah, i.e. the touches. Like, right? So mom works really hard at, at the sacrifice of her own self. Not that you don't do that, but I think it's just slightly different in a sense of like you can shut it off. Like mom's constantly thinking well, about... Well, the difference is I love to delegate. And mom, mm, yes, mom, mom likes to so do it herself Yona's because then not. he can do it the right way. Yona. And so I feel that same way. So your question is what happens when that happens? I physically cannot say, I'm really working hard on saying no. <laughs> it's a hard word. And it's my hard, right? framing. Isn't no a hard word? It's Jerry? tough. It's tough. And my framing question is like, who is this for? Like, right? So we just had dinner at my grandparents' house on Sunday. 20 people. I was tired. It's a lot to ask us to drive out to Fluvanna County. I know that it means so much for us. I love my grandparents, all the positive things. And I was like, but who is this for? Is this for me? Am I going because I want to go? Or am I going because I want Ravenna to be around her cousins? And the answer to that question was, I want Ravenna to be around her cousins and our grandparents. And, be, and for you to be around your grandparents. Yes, of course. So that's kind of how I, I guess I have to go into framing some uh -huh. form of boundaries because... Um, but do you think the millennial buyer would understand that? Yeah. I truly do. I have not... Slightly disagree with you on that. You think, though? Yeah, okay, I, so cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but here's why. I know so many 
And it's hard because in the medicine world, like you don't get to say no. So like all the, the work, our husband's a doctor, all the workers that I know right now are in medicine and they don't have that choice to say, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm and they're probably burnt the, you know what out. Yes. But, Is that fair? Yes. Oh no. yeah. But other than them, I have really seen a shift in people being like, you know what? Like, I'm not going to start my day until 10 a.m. But as I'm saying that, I'm now thinking oh. of all the people who work <laughs> so yeah. hard. Hmm. So, I need so, to think so about it. So setting in this business, setting boundaries. And plus you have a daughter. I mean, what time is your daughter waking up? Well, I wake her up. <laughs> yeah? So she sleeps till whenever you want her to? Well, you're no, fortunate. No, she does not sleep till whenever I want her to. I'm just an early bird. So, okay. like... 6.30 is a, is a good sleep for her. That's so fantastic. Yeah. How old is she? She's yet younger she's than two, year. right? She's a year. She's a great sleeper. That's fantastic. We have fantastic. always been privileged with sleep um, to the point that, like, we had a little bit of a sleep regression while dad and my in-laws were watching her, and, like, we kind of got away from it. Like, when we came uh -huh. back, it was gone, and we were like... Now you took a really good <laughs> I was time like, to did we just leave, miss that? <laughs> leave to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. Like, your, your timing was impeccable, Yeah, by I way, don't know, but... On, uh, also could have been a new setting. And, uh, well, she was in our house. Oh, so, no. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. And she had we just, caught that little cycle. <laughs> yeah, she had just, just figured out how to time walk. Just say, bye, yeah. mom and dad. So <laughs> I don't know, Jerry. That's a great question. But that's something that, like, I, while growing up and watching my family work so hard, is not what I would like to do um, with my time here on this planet. So, well, but, that's, but that's the great thing about this business, right? You, you know, mom and I... Good, bad, or indifferent are wired a very different way, right? We, we're either working seven days a week, 12 hours a day, or... And part of, that that, part of that is a byproduct, and I, I have a hard time explaining this to folks. We've been fortunate in that we've made our passions our profession, and then, like, we thoroughly enjoy doing it. I mean, are there aspects of our work that we don't love? Sure. But over the... I was, I was talking about this one with an attorney. A high power attorney, sure. okay? And obviously, I'm not going to dox who the attorney yeah. is, but the attorney was like, I don't really like what I do. And then, do you and, comprehend and that at the, all? The attorney, and I said, So why do you do it? No, amen. And, and they're like, Be Because of the money, because mm. she makes a boatload of money. Yeah. And, and at that moment, to your point, I had a hard time comprehending it. She's working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and yeah. does not like what she does. The most thing that she's doing over the course of a week. She does not like it at all. So I when, love what I do. So when you guys were growing up, what was the one thing I always said about I would never press you to do anything. Just do do it with passion. Whatever you do, have passion about it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't care what it is. If it was sweeping, I won't say what I know. What Be the I best at whatever you do. Yeah, sweeping but, streets or being an attorney or a doctor or a I teacher. I don't know. I think that's where, I think that, I think. Do you think there's that much of a shift? I truly would love to know I would love to gather the data on job satisfaction within my age group. I would love. You're to a young millennial. Data. I'm an old millennial. I would love. You're, to what are you? Ninety-four. Ninety. Okay, so you're right on the cusp <laughs> of almost Gen Z. I. Because I think the millennial. Could you put the the generational chart? So Doesn't but, the millennial go to ninety-five? Uh -huh. I think it's. He's yeah. got a chart. Yeah. I think yeah. it's ninety-five. But I think ninety-six. He, ninety-six. Like, thank you, Judah. This is. You know, opinions. The voice of God. Or... Opinions are like buttholes. Everyone has them and they sure. all stink. <laughs> yeah. So here is my Jeez, opinion. Jeez, where'd you hear that? Yeah, I censored it. Here's my opinion. Like, it's so tough to work and like, quote unquote, get the American dream right now. You know, like it's tough. We are saddled with student loans. We can't afford to even look at a house, let alone buy one. Um, Incomes have not raised according to inflation for a very long time. So maybe where you all got your like purpose and drive and sense of love for what you do is because you were able to like work knowing that like one day I'll, I'll get to do X, Y, and Z. That's a pretty far off dream for, uh, for like retirement is a very far off dream for most people who have student loans, who have a home, who are making 40K. I'm, I'm actually trying to find, you know, this is a great topic. That's my hot take. I wish no, no, no. We should unpack that hot so take. So it's like, why, why? Why would I like what I do when, like, I will never see the reward of, like, a Social Security? Like, that's done. My generation's not getting that. Well, if you don't do it, how are you going to get ahead? By doing bare minimum work. 
But th- oh, that's, wow. not, that's not going to lead, that's not going to yield results. But what, are they getting results from what they're doing right now? So I think we're mixing things up here. So, you know, the, 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 you know we, your mother and I and Jerry and you too, because I know, I know you well enough to know that um, what you were teaching you're passionate yeah, about, you will be passionate about helping your client of course. Uh, to buy and sell. The question is, is the number of transactions you have to do to satisfy that passion is probably a lot less than, than mom and I's. Uh, on that transaction. Well, because so, think of the privilege that I sit in. You do. You're right. Yeah, sure. Like I have, I'm not doing this to put, you know, I'm doing this because I genuinely like it. I'm not doing this so because I point. have to. You're you passionate know. about it. You technically don't have to do it. But here's the thing. When I'm teaching, I teach, I give myself 110%. I uh-huh. love, I love it. I put it all out there. you all teachers know you work crazy hours. Eventually, you're going to burn out when you're making $35,000. Yeah. My first teacher salary with a master's degree was $35,000. And it's worth the note, and you mentioned this early, and you, 42, glossed, over, it was 42. you glossed over this. But in both of our in family. In Seattle. No, that was out here. Oh, okay. That was Amaro County. Seattle we paid higher than Charlottesville City yeah. and higher than Fluvanna. So my first mm-hmm. teaching job, just because. With a I, master's degree. I believe that. And student loan debt. Mm-hmm, and a car payment and a rent. I just believe that. Salary transparency is very important, especially for minorities or women. But I made $42,000 out of Mount County with a master's degree my first year of teaching. And I had all the gung-ho. I was buying my own art supplies. I did, you know, did it all. But eventually, that person who wants to work themselves into the ground is going to burn out because it's post-tax. My first paycheck was $2,900. What's going to happen when you get into this, you make a professional relationship with real estate, because I think you're going to be extremely successful, Mm -hmm. and your client says, I'm working Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. The only time I can go and see these six to ten houses that are on my short list Mm -hmm. on your Saturday and Sunday. That's when I get a dash of mom and dad, and I just say, you got to do what you got to do, and we... (laughs) Or we will make it work. I mean, hold it. And look at that. And yeah. And <laughs> and you can't say or. I, I can't say or. You can but say or just certain times. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. When there's what like happened? genuinely two choices. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's not just the or. Re- okay, just hold on. Backtrack. Because it's not the <laughs> or. Go. You're completely lost. It's not the or. It's the but. When you say but, it negates anything you put. So what before grade it. did you teach? Fourth grade. But yeah, it's so, not so. grammar. It's more just like. <laughs> Like, I love you, but you drive me crazy, right? Yeah. Now that negates the, I love you. But no, you say, I love I you. I still love you. But and you drive, I love you, but you're driving me crazy right now. <laughs> just, just don't say but. I still love you. And you drive me crazy. I, my job is to keep this man on track. What okay. was your thought oh, on yeah. the 6 Sorry. to 10 showings on Saturday and Sunday? You were going to offer perspective. Yeah, so that's what, what you delegate. There you go. So that's the key to here, and this is the key to the partnership, and the key to the business is that we would team up together. Yeah. Right? And that's the dream. And that's what happens. And we team up together, and maybe with one client, we work together on it where you have the opportunity to do that. We're looking to grow into the Richmond market. So this, this, this takes time, but you're in your apprenticeship program, right? You're, you're going to be six to 12 months oh, yeah. of, of apprenticeship. So everything we're going to do, we're going to be to the hip with mm-hmm. you on it, on it. And eventually, but to Jerry's point, some of them you might, you know, cause what'll happen. Cause how the bird flies is getting pushed out of the nest. This is never, if you are successful at this line of work, it's never about the money. Mm. Never. It's always about taking care of people. I would say that's every business. That's every business. Yeah. But do you not, but I'll, I'll give you an example. This, this, this. And I can't, I can't wait to hear what she's going to say to your example. Go, you do your example, because she's going to be able to manage this thought and keep it in her head perhaps longer than you on this one. <laughs> yeah, I don't well, know. Well, we both have it. I both know have, you do. We I both have eight. Yeah, I, I, I totally know this. There's, there's a reason know. why there's notes and yeah. pens in front of both, I totally both, know both this. of us. But, you know, you, you have a, 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 a situation. We, have a, we had a situation. I can't... I can't um, Disclose, you know, like the attorney disclosed names and all this stuff. Back to mom, back to Yona's cards and notes. And there was a, a um, 80-something-year-old woman, God love her, lost her husband a couple of years ago. The house is in, in, 
in desperate need of help. She needs to sell it because she has to move for health reasons. And we're trying to figure out how we can help this wonderful person get to where she needs to do for the end of her life mm. at the end of the day and figure out a way that we can do this, get the home ready for the market, capitalize as much money on a, from her because it's about helping her. She has no husband. She, you know, all her, the situation is not pleasant, but that's what I love about what I do. Yes. That's what I love about what I do to help somebody like that achieve whatever this wonderful For woman sure. is trying because to achieve. Because we are people people we are people people but that's the that's the key to this business really i think it's i think it's self-selecting i think if you are a people person you will do very I well got, in this I field write that down. but for her it was about the money for this woman it was about the money i was talking about it from the agent's perspective right it wasn't about how much commission i'm going to make or eggs i'm going to make or not make or whatever it's all about helping this as a, as the as a, my um this Reese Media Award that I won and my quote on that. It's all about helping somebody with one of the three requirements for a trip around the sun, right? Food, clothing, and shelter. And this particular person needs shelter. She can't handle the shelter she's in now, and she needs to do that, to do that. I don't know. It's why I love and do what I do every day. And well, and I think when you frame real estate like that, it becomes closer to like a civil, a civil service, which then is what teaching is right like I wanted to teach those children how to read because I love them and I cared for them not because my hourly wage was 1150 like you know like that <laughs> so I think to you I would just challenge you to think about like it doesn't have to be about the money for you because maybe it doesn't have to be about the money for you but there are real estate agents who rely upon their oh, commission yeah. I'm not saying I'd, that I would say what? 100%. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. right, right, right. 100%. So, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I had a question asked to me. It was another interview I did out west uh, for a newspaper. Humble out. brag. Yeah, it was a humble brag. He's yeah. always got was that a humble brag. brag. Was that a humble brag? Mm -hmm. Okay. I did an interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. And they asked me the question, how do you recover from losing $17 million? Mm -hmm. And that's by not focusing on you lost $17 million. You focus on taking care of people and the money will always follow. Yes. On that end of it. I, I do want to kind of get back to this boomer or millennial thing because it's a real thing right now. And we've been, t Jerry and I have been talking about this for a while. And uh -huh. I would love your, your take on it. Oh boy. Um, no, no, no. Uh, so right now, the boomer, which is me, has really got the market by a chokehold. Chokehold. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's talk about, let's tell the story. Let's talk about your experience of buying in Richmond and how that process went from a millennial buyer's perspective. Because we lost a lot of homes. I think, what was it, 13 homes or something like this? Yeah. We lost before we, we got one. So talk about that and, and talk about that mindset. And the reason I think it's important for you and which you get, um, because you're probably going to help other millennials and yeah. you're going to be able to explain that. So what did you learn? What you thought was different? And how do you think you can convey it to other people? So I don't know if I am the person to talk to, talk on that because of the specific position that I am in, where I am very lucky that I have you all to help, right? But there's things as a millennial. For sure. But I think if you really want to get a genuine answer, you should ask people who are under 30, newly 30, 35, what it feels like looking at a home, knowing that it's eight percent interest, knowing that no, we're not, we're not six point, let's six look, point. Look, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> knowing, <laughs> knowing that if you do a down payment, you're clear in your savings. It's done. You don't have your parents to fall back on, um, and you will be paying a mortgage that will be over half of your monthly income, and that is just because both Houston and I are so money conscious, like that is a feeling we have felt. I think if you wanted a, a true answer to that, you should ask your community of people who watch, like how does that feel? Because it's very demoralizing and I'm just in a very small subset of that. There are people who their reality is that they will never be able to afford a home. 
And that sucks because we are still of the generation where it's like that was the American dream, right? Like now younger than us, the American dream is different. Like that's not what that is. But we are still of the generation that like success looked like a certain thing. And what it looked like was getting it, going to college because they peddled college, <laughs> going to college, trade schools are better, um, getting a degree, finding somebody to marry, and having a home. And so, like, that's now all being shifted by the younger generation, which is cool. Um, but we're still, hold, I still hold on to that dream. Like, that was my goal, right? Um, I don't remember your original question. So, I do. So, there's this, like, meme going around where it's a bunch of, like, old people dancing. And they're very old, sorry. And they're dancing and they're, like, you know, 65 plus knowing that they bought their home for seven raspberries in 1975, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they're just like happy and just like kind of chugging along. And there's a lot of friction between the generations about that. Um, and yeah. I don't have the answer. I just know that. Well, so I'm... you, you, you feel, you feel uh, disenchanted, uh, perhaps a bit demoralized, maybe some bitterness oh, yeah. toward market conditions because um, as someone who, I mean, and you said this, was it uh, 95? Mm-hmm, 94. Yeah, 94. But thank you. So yeah. almost 30. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost 30. Uh, daughter, yeah. husband, uh, came into a job market with student loan debt. Yeah. Um, inflation at extremely high levels. Yeah. Uh, the housing market at a level of affordability, perhaps never seen in American history. Yeah, and I think it's like... Headwinds, headwinds. Yeah, and it's like, what are you mad at? You know, it's like nobody's fault. It's not Keith's fault. Yeah. It's not Jerry's fault. Yeah. It, the peop it's just like, what are you mad at? Other than... Byproduct of COVID. Yes, and that was very real. And like, the, you know, the market... I remember 2019 and Houston and I were thinking of just like purchasing the tiniest home in Seattle instead of renting. That's her husband. Yes. Yeah. And we were like, we'll just buy this tiny, it was 490 square feet and it was listed for 499. 490 90 square, square foot? foot home. Listed Get at, for less than 500 square feet. Yes. And Good Lord. a full bed could fit in the one bedroom with tiny little end tables. And it was beautifully done with a cute shed in the backyard, but it was 500,000. And Houston and I were like, never. Never will that gain any equity. Not only did it sell for five sixty, yeah, but we checked on the market. Was it north of eight hundred? It was six ninety nine. Okay, so significant equity. So, but significant you, appreciation. But you just don't know. You look at that and you're like, I can't. That's almost a thousand dollars a square foot, if my math is correct. Yeah. So that's insane. Um, and so when you're up against that, unless you have bank rolls, so. It, and you just, how do you win? And I feel like that's, that's very frustrating for people. So, uh, Judah, I just sent you a text. There's two, two charts that, that I'm going to ask Judah to put out. And NAR, National Association of Realtors, puts out a generational buyer's report every, yeah. every year. Um, so what I've sent is two little quick little pictures for 22 mm. versus 23. So in 20. Um, 22, there was 43% of the sales were millennials. Mm -hmm. I haven't gotten that yet. Oh, okay. It should be on its way. I'll, I'll, like, but did, I'm just wondering, like, I would love to look at a subdivision of that but, but, percentage. But 23, mm -hmm. it dropped to 23%. Yeah. And the, and the boomers, it was a complete flip. 40-something percent of... In 23, the boomers were the were the buyers, and that and that was because we have cash yeah. and so forth and so on. There's about 70 million boomers and about 170 million yeah. of you. That's Gen Z and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and you guys. And we've been talking about this for a while. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I I see eventually there's going to be a real conflict, huge conflict. R real. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking about a real conflict. Here. I think it's hard because it's like. Judah, I'll try that again. Where do you direct? Facebook Messenger would be best. It's instantaneous if you set it to Judah. Got it. Yeah. Thank it just, you. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I am not the spokesperson for all people who are 29 and 30 who, there are people who look different than me. There are people who have different obstacles in their life um, and hardships that I will never understand because I never had to have those obstacles and hardships. 
But if you look at me on paper, if you look at who I am on paper and who my family is on paper, we should have had a walk in the park buying a house. It should have been one plus two equals three. Because there's nothing, there's no inventory. And it wasn't. It was not a walk in the park. So if it's not a walk in the park for me, who should be like a slam? But you thought it was a walk in the park. And can I can I highlight can I highlight uh, your your husband's uh, professional? Yeah. Like uh, he, what he does yeah. professionally? Yes. Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're so just, further furthers your argument. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm, exactly. Like if you look at my family on paper, we are both college educated. We both have the quite frankly, the privilege of having a plan B if anything were to go wrong with our mortgage. Like, we should have just been able to... Hold it. You just invited yourself to the house? <laughs> I think she pointed to you. Yeah, she pointed to you. You Hold know, it. it should have been a walk in the park for us. So if it's not a walk in the park for us, Hold how it. is... And I don't Yon, know... Yona, it's time to move. I think we need to move. I will... Shh. I don't know the politically correct term, but... I don't know how blue collar or middle America is that's, doing that's it. That's that's the preferred nomenclature. Like I genuinely don't know how those people, living on the financial margin. But that's what we've been talking it. about for this is. But they're working. They are the the backbone of our country. Where it's railroad, it's truck drivers, it's frontline workers, it's, teachers, it's, nurses, police, yes, fire. Yes, it's, it's the genuine. So the technical term is workforce housing. Frontline workers. And how 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 can how can you look at somebody who is, you know, driving our railroads and like delivering goods and being of the, the infrastructure of the United States and be like, oh, sorry, buddy, you're going to no, rent we, we and then not retire. Uh, you know, on Mondays, we're, um, we're fortunate enough to focus on the Hispanic community and mm -hmm. the, 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 the buyer and seller. We had two rock star folks here, uh, Johnny Ornalis and Ricardo uh, Cruz. And we got a lot of comments, too, to get yeah, to. Um, oh, yeah, on that. But talking about their community, yeah. that, I mean, it was it's nothing to be traveling an hour, hour and a half. You know, how can we, you know, I, and, and it's very high level question and I'm just asking this as a, a young person as a millennial how do we fix this how, how do we I mean are you good with more inventory are you good with more building are you good with with um, you know we just did this rezoning in the city yeah Our, I mean I think the not does your community look at it that way I don't know because who I am as a slice will never be a not in my backyard person like I, I get peddled propaganda 24 <laughs> so do I yeah I can't even imagine so you. I yeah I will never be a like a not in my backyard a NIMBY. Person. Yes. Yeah. But I'd imagine there are a hundred percent and it, it makes sense to me. Like growing up in Fluvanna County, that's somebody's land. And I understand that they don't want to shift that. In a gated community in Fluvanna. Yeah, right. Yeah. But I just don't know. A little privileged, huh? Yeah. For sure. A hundred percent. I just don't know. Yeah. I don't have an answer. And a lot of times it feels just like I mean, Houston and I just had this conversation driving to grandma's the other day. It's like, how do you solve such an untangible beast? And I don't think you can. I don't think can. we can. And that's we well, well, I think I think the way you do it I don't think we can. is you talk about it. Your local elections. Lo local. Uh, Neil, Neil Williamson, uh, all elections matter. Elections matter. Contested elections matter even mo more. <coughs> but yeah, I, I think you do that by talking about it and telling stories about it and, and putting some real life, uh, that's what I'm trying to get out in this conversation, some real life uh, examples here, right? It, I think there's been a dialogue breakdown between people who are of a certain age and people who are of a different age. There's yeah. been a bit of a dialogue breakdown. But that can be said true about any group. Do you want you guys want to highlight the comments? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Vanessa Parkhill watching the program. Hey, Vanessa. Vanessa Parkhill. Um, I, no idea what Vanessa's um, age is. We've dubbed her the queen of Earliesville, Virginia. I do know she has uh, children out of college. She's and, 29 at heart. And 29 at heart. Mm -hmm. Believe she has children that are, Vanessa, I would say 29, 30. I, I'm curious what Lee's age. I remember covering Lee while I was at the University of Virginia as a newspaper writer, and he was a standout athlete. Oh. Uh, she, says, she says to you specifically, yeah. um, yes, but to those older people, those seven raspberries felt like a lot For sure. to those of us that were buying a home when we were young. For sure. Well, yeah, I, and this is where Keith highlights 18%, 19% yeah. interest rate. Is that uh, what you were going to do there? I, I, I feel like I'm part of the family. Yeah, well, I mean, Unfortunately, you are. I mean, yes. <laughs> I enjoy your family. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Uh, 
I mean, like everybody's perspective is their own perspective. And she says her son is 26, the daughter is 30. Yeah. Uh, she says blue collar workers are making more than many college grads these days yeah. and oh, yeah. aren't strapped with college debt. Mm -hmm. And she said many of us 50 something folks started with much more modest homes than those on the market today. For mica counters versus granite, fewer bathrooms, smaller bedrooms, smaller homes. I would have a. I would love to know where those homes are, because uh, we were looking for them. <laughs> We were looking for a home that was like in the $300,000 range in Richmond, Virginia. And you've highlighted in the show and past the closing price. Can we mention that again or do you not want to? No, it's okay. It was six fifty. dollars Okay. And that was like... I would say that's that. Can I... It, I want to say this and then you jump in. Six fifty dollars is not starter home category. No. That's not is what that we want. Is that safe to say, Smith? Uh, uh, six fifty dollars at that time in that neighborhood was starter home. Yes. Okay. And, but we didn't, okay, but generally is not. But... But, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, if that is starter home, then so, that's so, the problem. <laughs> um, back to this trusted advisor comment that we use all the time. Um, you know, I, I will tell you, um, it was a pleasure to work with you in, in Houston because you trusted me. Well, it's easy to trust you. There has been plenty of times where I sat back and looked at our real estate thing and I was like if that wasn't my father and I knew without a f like a wavering that he had what was best that you would have had doubts yes yeah and, and in but fact I, I, but I know you treat everybody like that I get that I don't know if that's a blanket I, I just want to say this out okay, loud go ahead. I didn't treat you any different than I treated any other and any as somebody other who has sat on the other side of years of phone calls I can confirm he did not treat me any different than everybody else I'm still saying if I totally get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. If, if it was especially with your first iteration. Yes, and across the country, like if you weren't my father, I would have questions for you that I was like, nope, I know Dad is working his hardest because I've had a life of seeing it. Well, Andrew, you my dad. You trusted me, right? Because yes. because we got to a point where I guess, I, I guess her point is, if it was not Dad and Mom yeah. working the deal, there would have been, been much more doubt that would have been in her mind. Like, real scary doubt. Yeah, scary doubt. Yeah. I totally appreciate mm -hmm. that. Well, you probably would have made a decision you shouldn't have A hundred percent. We would have, because we were close to calling you and being like, just scrap it. Like, yeah. we can't wait anymore. Like, well, we'll we had that conversation, yeah. right? And, and, and that conversation I've had with you but and many clients at that time, look, let's face it. You bought it at 650. I, I bet you your home has got an eight in front of it now. But, I, but I'm trying to highlight it. So if you would have waited for a year... I understand why people have a hard time trusting because it is a scary, oh it God. can be a very scary thing to undergo. Again, it's one of the big three, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one of the biggest, typically, it's one of the biggest purchases, the biggest moves that people will do. You know, uh, uh, Vanessa said that, you know, Yona and I bought our first house in 1988 at 18%. I think it was- What was the price tag? I think it was $125,000, which was rather steep for those yeah. days, you know, we were just opened up our own businesses. You were um, a gleam in my eye at that point. Um, was she born? No. We were all okay. accidents. Okay. Uh, but Mom even, but yes, yeah, <laughs> I don't think you're my wife. It's okay. <laughs> you, I didn't hear. It's not a, no, it's okay. She's, no, wait. We can bleep that out. <laughs> yeah, Did yeah. you say accident? <laughs> yeah, of no. course. Uh, no, no way. No, no, I will fight no. that till yeah. Uh, no. till no. No. I love your family no, so much. No, That's no, silly. No. no. Maybe an oops, but James, not an James Watson uh, says you're speaking the truth. Home ownership takes different levels of family support at this point, even for college graduates yeah. in most cities, unfortunately. Juan Sarmiento is watching this program. Juan, I'm going to get to your comment from earlier. He says, It's a shame we are losing teachers at such an astronomical it rate. My son is trying to hang on in it's Spotsylvania tough. County as a teacher. And, oh, and that's can you ask him what school he's in? in what school, Juan? I would love to know. Um, John Snow watching the program. She is keeping it real. It's always about the money. You can, var you can varnish it any way you like, but if you're not being compensated accordingly, you won't be able to sustain your passion and drive. And I think truth that, that might be one of the divides, the big generational divides, is that like maybe it wasn't always about the money for 60 and plus, and like the way their hands laid, it just worked out. But for us, it's about the money. Because if I'm going to be saying no to something else, am I going to be saying no to... Time with your daughter. Time with my daughter. Your most precious time. Time with my husband. Time yeah. with my family. Time with my dog. Like if I'm It's got to be... You have to justify it. There is a capital... What is it? Um, opportunity cost. Thank you. Yeah. There's an opportunity cost. And I feel like... I finished all the Smith sentences. Thank you. Yes. I'm I appreciate it. So it's just, you know, maybe the opportunity cost just isn't at 
working ourselves into the ground right now. And that's not to say, that's just to say, I understand why some people would be feeling that way. You all, you are devil's advocate for the sake of the talk show. He mm -hmm. says Spotsylvania High School. Oh, cool. Houston uh, went to Riverbend. Devil's advocate for the sake of a talk show. Because mm -hmm. that's my role is to play devil's advocate to keep the conversation and answer, going. And finish us. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are extremely similar. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sure you've heard this before. Yeah. yeah. yeah right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're buds. Yeah, yeah, you guys are extremely similar people. Uh, we're, we're, very similar personality types. Would you say we're competitive? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like okay, I'm talking get, to two keeps. Here's, here's your. Get to a cherry. <laughs> you are in a fortunate position with this opportunity cost of not choosing yeah. to pursue work. Yeah. If you don't want to be cut and devil's advocate for the sake of a talk show. Yeah. Because of, of, of your partner's yeah, I think uh, profession and salary. But yeah. I that's feel like, not the norm. But, no, I know. I feel like yeah. I've been pretty but, open about but, that. Yeah, you know, correct. And thank you for me. You know, that's the secret to what, what we do here in storytelling yeah. is, is being authentic. And they're freaking and, loving and, it, and, by the way. Uh, I'm you. like, the feed's on fire. Well, authentic I mean. Authentic and honest, right? Because that's, that's what people, that's what you need to be. Yes. But you made the choice to still do that, even though you really didn't have to. And that's what I'm trying to drive out. Oh, the meaning why. being a teacher? Or being a real estate a agent? A real estate agent. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah, because, yeah. I yes. mean, it, if you want to go to teacher, that's fine, but yeah. it's more. No, it, I just miss, yeah. It's real talk with Keith Smith. Yeah. It is a real and estate teacher. focus show. Just and <laughs> teacher, ex teacher Yvonne. <laughs> so that, you know, right? Pull down the partner yeah. tab. There's some awesome people in there that yeah. can, firms that can help you in, in, in your transaction and in your real estate yes. life. But so, this is a real estate show after all. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Unless I've Unless you been feel pretty, you need to teach me more. No, well, I'll, I'll get to that later. But <laughs> I do feel that I've always been very open that, like, that is. That's my main, that's what I feel like I'm singing from the hill. How do we, how did Houston and I have a really tough time, not because of, just because of the market, getting a home? How do other people get a home? Was it number 13 or 14 it offers? Was 13th was the one that I win. And I guess now. She saying, struck out 12 times yeah, before I, she bought 13. But I, you started it with why did I choose to become a real estate agent? And I genuinely think. 100% it is, there is a financial side of that. Like I would love the commission. I would love the knowledge in the market. And I would love to be able to like at one point do that for my family. The other part is I saw that experience and was like, if this is that hard for Houston and I, there you go. that is impossible for other people. And I love the show. I think sometimes we do need to be a little real with people and be like, this sucks. <laughs> This is not fair. This sucks. It doesn't mean we're going to roll over and not find you a home. But it's going to take 12 times to knock out, if not more, because that's, you it know. Depends on the location. She's yeah. getting props right now from Jessica Baker. So that's exactly right. Jessica what Emery is giving her some props right now. Yeah. Uh, a bunch of real estate firms watching the show. Uh, Vanessa wants to highlight this to you guys. We bought in Earliesville Forest, mm -hmm. but we added on instead of moving. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the impact of the HGTV fixer upper on the overall housing market, meaning yeah. that they're staying stickier longer. You can attest to that. It used to be seven years on average. People stayed at homes. Now is it, what, flirting with a decade? I think, are I think sticky? when you see the new report come out over here, you're going to see north of 10 years. Well, north of 10 you years. You're gonna, well, that's, and, his, that's his point. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the, the, we've been doing this for three and a half decades. And there is a impact on the market now mm -hmm. that I've never seen before. Right? Yeah. Right? Um, it's crazy. Uh, people, and, and I'm part of the problem. Yeah. Right? Because when we were building houses for people, mm -hmm. all these hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of houses that we built, guess what we built? Age in place. Yeah. Right? Primaries on the floor. Well, I mean, floor. you're, I would say, certainly part of the problem. I mean, what do you have, four bedroom? Well, my house. Do you have a four bedroom? My house is a prime, four bedroom. Is a four bedroom. Well, what do you got? Well, three. Technically three, but three it could be four. Room. Okay, so 3,000 plus but square feet. My primary, when Amazing. I built that yeah. home in 2000. When you're living there by yourself, you, Yona, and Forrest. And Get on out. And a cat. There's a family you, who needs you, it. Yona, that's what it, that, yeah. That's, seriously. There's a growing family who needs it. There's a family that needs it. Now I feel guilty. See? Yeah, he's not well, out here trying to fix the problem. And she and and, and, and you just say I'm really not trying. To fix it? And isn't Yona trying to move closer to the city? Mm -hmm. About like Pedal where she it, can Jerry. walk. Oh, look at that! It's 11-11. I mean, I, I, from my standpoint, it's an absolute no-brainer. But I it's mean, hard too because it's. But like I. Sure. My point is, I don't have to, and that's it. And that's so, why you're not gonna. So there's yeah. there's two phrases that I'm coining for 2024. Life will happen in 2024. So you're going to start seeing lots of life choices having to make 
market, I think inventory is going to pick up a little bit, but it's anemic <laughs> on it. You know, the, the real estate market is going to chug along yeah. in 2024. Um, and, and, and I think you're going to see more in 24, but you're going to see more life impacts happen. But on us right now, I'm not on a life impact that I have to move. My primary is on the main floor. I got 1,600 square feet. My, all, everything, we can live completely on our, our main floor. But when you and Ravenna come and Yasmina and the two grandkids yeah. come, now I got space. For sure. But, but eventually, that argument, eventually, I'm not. I'm going to have to move. That out. argument is the it's antithesis of what he's promoting. Yeah, but but I'm trying to put a, a put. A, maybe I'm not doing. Excuse me, a good enough job to, for it. There are things like that that have happened over the last couple of decades, to yeah. include two percent interest, to include homes we're getting built with that. And back to the starter home, nobody's building starter homes because yeah. they can't. Yeah. You explain can't, why. Explain why. You can't get through the rezoning process. It's not worth it. Colonial Circle and our fine county. Louvain. Like it, don't like it, whatever. Yeah. We're on ours. It's on its sixth year of working into its seventh year, and they haven't gone vertical with homes. And oh, by the way, they're probably not going to be in the greatest of price points. Yeah. Because 24% of all new construction costs are related to, to regulatory expenses yeah. on that. So on a $400,000 house, 100 grand of that is regulatory on it. There's just not mm -hmm. enough new product, new homes being created. So back in the day, you know, Levittown, where, where I, you know, we went from Brooklyn to Levittown back also to Brooklyn. Also problematic, but yes, go ahead. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. I, I got that. Mm -hmm. But what the intent was after World War II was they built these little 900 square foot mm -hmm. um, starter homes, right? Yeah. For veterans coming home from World War II. Mm -hmm. Projects like that are not happening, right? Yeah. Because the regulatory environment, right, wrong, or indifferent, is very different now than it was then. Um, James, uh, the average family could not buy or afford your house if you moved out. And to move into the city of Charlottesville, you would need a nice bag of money to get something decent. We it's a zero-sum game. Is that my brother-in-law, James? Yeah. Yeah, so we literally had this conversation as I rolled out of Tavola last night. If I was going to buy a home, I would buy a home in Belmont. Yeah, so would everybody. It's 800 grand. Yeah. Million bucks. So basically what he's saying is, and you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth. You sell, you would be buying something more expensive than your exit of your current house. Well, yeah. I mean, everybody yeah. does things for a reason, right? Like it makes sense why dad would want to sell. Plus I got stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. It makes sense. Like everybody, you know, people my age do things for a reason. Like we're all just doing things because we have to, to do what we need to get done. So... But, you know, to solve your question, I have... Yeah. So right now, just a high level, and we've been talking about this for years, the buyer profile is you and me. Yeah, and you're going to win every time. And I'm going to be able to win because I can sell my house. You have savings. You can sell I your house. Savings. Don't have student loan debt. I don't have student Probably loan. Probably don't have, you know, credit card debt. Okay. You know, we do not have credit Don't card have debt. kids living in the house. Hopefully. I mean, yes, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got a lot of uh, yeah, advantages. And, and, and that's when we go back to your experience. But how what, is that different? What, we, what, were you, what were we losing against? Cash? Yeah. Almost every single one of Everyone. them were cash. Yeah. Almost all of them were cash. Like, almost like a quarter or a half percent, you know, a quarter. 25 or 50% cash. Oh, yeah. no, I would a little bit more than that. Vanessa says, I appreciate Yvonne's perspective and the family dynamic show on the uh, family dynamic on the show today. Jennifer on a different Facebook page. Hey, I love this so dynamic nice. on the show. Lauren on a different Facebook page. You got to do more shows like this. She's <laughs> keeping it real. On a different Facebook page. This comment's come in. This has been one of your best shows yet so far, Keith. On uh, Twitter, this show has been excellent. It's been real and it's from the heart. Comments all over like this. You are fantastic on this show. You. I sincerely mean that. But Kevin I, Yancey in Waynesboro for you. Take a look at what your parents or grandparents paid. Purchase price and aggregate it today and see the percentage difference generation to generation, cool. which is your argument. Yeah, that's cool. Well, but like I, I would be interested if there's anybody who felt like they are of my age and wants to share their experience, maybe frustration not being able to get into a home or frustration with just buying a home or it would be cool to get somebody who could like 
kind of be advised on the show, right? So this is She why. should come back. She should come back. A lot of comments if you want to get to it. Go them. ahead. Yeah. Go yeah. Ahead. Uh, Holly Foster. Well, I know we're over time. So. Oh, it's all right. It's totally good. I got 11.45, but it's okay. on the mall. We got plenty of time. Holly Foster uh, and Henrico. That's why you work all the time. Queen of... I do work all the time. <laughs> I work all the time. My wife would literally say that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it worked but, but, but go ahead. Um, Holly Foster says, um, uh, Avon and her husband could have found a less expensive home if they had gone to Goochland or yes, Midlothian, but sure. they wanted to be in an area closer to the hospital for his work. Yes. The area they purchased in used to be starter homes about 30 years ago. Yeah. Now they are far more expensive because of its location. You're right. And That's that West Side was- Richmond. That is spot on. 100%. From someone 100%. who lives in the area. Yeah. That you could not have... That- no truer words have ever been yeah. spoken. Yeah, and that was a big conversation between Houston and I. Like, we could live out in the Gooch and pay $300,000. Um, again, to... But you wanted... Vanessa. You said this on previous shows. You've wanted to walk yeah. with stroller in a neighborhood setting, grab a coffee yes. while walking out the front door, a la yeah. Seattle. Yeah, and to... I believe it was Vanessa. To Vanessa's point, like, I... I have that mobility and I have that privilege to say that's what I would like. Um, and that is why it's so frustrating because if everybody would want that, they deserve to have the things that they want. Um, and I knew from my mental health as a new mother, someone who just moved away from all of my friends who were walking distance in Seattle, that if this was going to feel like a home for me, those were the requirements that I needed. And as your real estate agent, I knew that, and that's where we kind of had, yeah. had the focus and temper expectations and all this stuff. Judah, yeah, you, you're right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jerry. I mean, Let's so much going. Judah, would you yeah. mind going to a four shot real quick? So um, this is what I want to do. I mean, this is something that Jerry and I have been talking about. You and I have been talking about is to have a re- regular, regularly. Dude, you should totally occurring, come back. Occurring I have show. A good idea. But we have a fourth seat. I have so a good idea. Anybody? Well, who's, you mean four shot with Judah? You put a yeah. four shot. Judah's on. Give me just a second. Yeah, I just want just, people okay. to see the okay. empty, oh, the empty seat. Yeah. You go studio camera. Studio, studio camera. camera. Sorry. A yeah, studio camera would well, be easier uh, for him. He doesn't have to I, set up the scene in that circumstance. This is what I get for trying to be the director. Yeah. <laughs> studio <laughs> camera. <laughs> studio <laughs> camera. Thank you. But what I wanted folks to do is, is see that empty seat. So those who are watching and listening, yes, that's what, that's what I want to do with the show going forward. I think that would be really cool to tap into like my age people who are feeling... Real estate agents, professionals, No, no, buyers. I'm saying I think someone who is in the position like will I ever get to... Yeah. Will I ever be able to I'm buy in. a home? And then because there is so much of like, like what goes on during um, like a meeting with you when you advise me how to do. There's so much unknowns that if someone could just see what it would look like that's what to have that conversation it might allow people to feel more comfortable and more trust or you know more trust in the process that you, you know sh- maybe not right now maybe in two years maybe it is right now but either way you're not going to know those answers until you ask those questions uh-huh. and i know at least for me i get stuck in the like well i don't want to ask the questions because i might not like the answer you know i um i can say this because houston said it to me houston is an anesthesiologist he's a doctor mm-hmm. he's a highly educated man on that, and he pulled me aside. He says, Keith, I didn't realize this was this difficult. It's tough. I didn't realize. I but, thought this was easy. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. I, I genuinely thought once we found the home, that was it. I was like, I look at these all day on, you know, I look at yeah. them all day. On, <laughs> you see it on Zillow or wherever yeah. you want, yeah. So I, I, I know you've got a meeting. We're running a little bit over. Just a, just a couple of questions on that. Yeah. Do you want to shout, shout uh, out? Yeah, I mean, dozens of people saying for you to come back. Uh, I think that there are more important perspectives to hear than me that I would love to help facilitate get on the show. There you go. I mean, there you go. Uh, fantastic, fantastic. Well, there's commentary. a way to end the show. Fantastic commentary right so here. please, if uh, you watch and you think, like, I would love my perspective to be shared. Oh, I mean, I, 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 and, and, to, and to your point, um, and I think you would, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn here. Too much respect for you. But to, to your point, perhaps that perspective has been uh, not shared enough on the talk show. I, 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 yeah, and, and that's the reason why I've been pushing you f- yeah. to do this, right? And, ask, and I wanted yeah. to give you your space yeah. and your time, you. right? Um, I and, mean, often I guess what I'm saying is, and it, this even goes for the show that I do with the I Love Siebel show, oftentimes I'm either chatting with or having commentary or topic matter that pertains to what's in front of my face. And not necessarily like a uh, holistic or, or an aerial view of where we're at in, in society or circumstances yeah. today, is, oh, yeah. which is the point you're making. Yeah. 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 I think it would be cool to get well, in many def- different 
perspectives would be cool. You've done enough shows by now. It's, it's interesting. We're sitting here with the four of us having a conversation and it's hard to know who's actually listening and who's actually yeah. watching. And Jerry does a great job on, on feeding I people. That, I try. That, I try. That, I'm not going to get to everyone's that, today. That come, that come in. But yes, this, we never actually spoke about this, but this was my goal. This yeah. was my objective to have you come in, great do once a month, life. twice a month, bring in some younger people, you know, maybe... People are getting tired of almost because five I years of hearing some old dude. Storytelling seems to be your your theme of today, and I think if you could tell the stories of different people, there you go. That would be pretty cool. Uh, this, some more I'll vet this one and, and bring it to the forefront. Holly Foster, who's in in Henrico, hey, and I, I personally met Holly half a dozen times. She's an incredibly kind woman. Uh, she's given you props and said thank she's you. very much enjoyed the show thank and that you made the right decision for your life. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's all you're trying to do, right? Make the best decision with the choices you got in front of you. There it is. Do the best you can with what you got. Mm -hmm. Do and the best you, you can. When you know with better, do better. Yeah, hundred percent. That's a, a a real rough quote of Maya Angelou. I uh, didn't know I could do better until I learned how to do better, and then I did better. Know better, do better. I like that. For the uh, viewers and listeners whose comments we did not relay live on air or get to today, I apologize. We try to get to every of them. Uh, all the comments uh, today, there was quite a bit, which I think is a testament to our guest today. Uh, the newest realtor on Yes Realty Partners. Uh, just make sure it's in that 9 to 5 range, Monday through Friday. Uh, I think that's what everybody wants. That's what everybody do, do wants. You, do you actually <laughs> think I'm going to let that happen? I think you are going to. I'm going to practice my You're delegating gonna, skills. There you go. Good girl. It's a good opportunity to practice delegating. Well, well said. Mm -hmm. Well said. The show was excellent. Thank you. I, I, I just, it was fun. I just, to me, this is simple. I'm with people that I love and, and get along Having with. Having conversations about what we like to talk what about. What we like to talk about. Yeah, this, 100%. This, this, but we should get more narratives in here that disrupt what you all think. I, I, it, <laughs> And that's her point, and I think she I think, makes a good point. And I've been making that point for a long time. You got to have someone challenge you. Yeah. Uh, apparently, I've, 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 we've got that. Yeah, because that's how you build trust is by having opposing conversations. There you go. I think that's boom. Very well said. Boom. Mic drop right there. <laughs> yeah, she did the mic drop. Uh, <laughs> Judah Wickhauer, the man behind the camera, doing the hard work to allow us to do the easy work. Mm -hmm. The show is archived nice wherever you get your social media content. We hope you find it online at realtalkwithkeithsmith.com and you click the partners tab on the website where you'll see the trusted advisors in the game. Please. The I Love Seville show is up in approximately one hour. So long, everybody. Right. That was excellent. Thanks, Shotzi. Yeah, you're welcome. He's, he's going to tell us what the mics and cameras are all. I've been